Hi, good morning. Welcome to Bell's Books. It's Carly and I'm doing a vlog this weekend, a mini vlog just for Saturday and Sunday. Today is Saturday. I usually work on Saturdays but I've got today off because it is Buckfest. This is a local festival that Dan's band is playing at. So that's happening today but because it's Saturday and I'm not at work, I can do park run. So I'm dressed in my running gear. I'm going to go and do park run which I haven't done in about two years. So, mm, don't know how that's gonna go down, but it'll be fun trying. I will check in with you afterwards when I'm a sweaty mess. <laughs> Hello, it is now 10 past one on Saturday. I've had quite a stressful morning. So I went to park run, which was lovely. Um, I do love a park run. I haven't been since January, 2020, because I work Saturdays, so I can't do park run anymore. I'm just going to grab my tea. Came back from Park Run. I saw my family at Park Run because my aunt always runs it and my uncle is a marshal with their dog, which was lots of fun. So that was lovely. It was hard work because I've not been running in a very long time. So I had to walk a bit, which I don't like to do. Also, I got blisters on both my feet and they were very painful. So Park Run was hard, but seeing my family was lovely. So that was nice. And I came home, had a bath, and then everyone is freaking out because <laughs> it's the festival. And Dan was getting ready, and I can say this because none of these people are going to watch this video. Trying to organise musicians to get to a gig is like trying to herd cats, honestly. So last night, one of them was coming from far away to this rehearsal. They were all worried that he wasn't going to get there. <laughs> the drummer doesn't have any decent drumsticks, so Dan's had to bring him some. And this morning, Dan's brother was freaking out because he's lost his wallet. And um, he was trying to sort out his COVID pass because the festival is requiring, requiring you to um, have the COVID pass on your, like, the app on your phone. So I was trying to get Tom to put the app on his phone, say it's fine, it's very easy to do, just download it, fill in your details. Also, I was supposed to take Tom and Dan at one o'clock to the festival, come back, and then me and Holly are gonna go later on because I have to stay here to feed Katie because, you know, she has to have her medication and her insulin at certain times. So I can't go until later anyway. Um, and then Dan was, I could tell Dan was kind of like nervous and just wanted to get there. Tom was not really ready for one o'clock. So I just took Dan. Tom was going to come with me and Holly later on. Oh, stressful. Anyway, he's gone now. So the house is quiet. I have to, I haven't eaten yet. So I'm very hungry because I did park run and I burnt something like, I don't know, 400 calories which means I can have spaghetti hoops on toast for my lunch, <laughs> which I know is kind of terrible, but and my, my um, Italian friend Valentina will be frowning at me. I can, I can hear her going, Carly, don't eat spaghetti hoops. It's an abomination for Italians, which I appreciate, but it's also the food of my childhood and I love it. So I'm gonna have spaghetti hoops on toast Sorry, Vale. Um, I'm going to finish this tea. And then the kitchen is like a shit tip. So I have to, there's a lot of washing up here. So I need to do the washing up, tidy up a bit. I haven't even spoken to you about what books I'm reading. Um, they're all in the living room. So I'll sit down and do a little check-in with you once I've eaten and done the washing up. But I will to talk to you about a current obsession that I'm going through. I just had a parcel delivered. It is a parcel from Ryman's, the stationers. Oh, it's in two parts. Oh no, is it broken? It better not be broken. Broken. I'm currently going through a fountain pen phase because I am a geek, right? I don't mind admitting that. The other day I was in Tesco and I bought a Parker fountain pen. I used to have a Parker when I was at school. Bloody loved it. Anyway, they only come with cartridges. So, and I like to use a bottle of ink because, you know, reducing plastic waste. So I 
always get a converter for my fountain pens so that I can use the ink from my bottle. So I ordered, this is, a, this is terrible, I ordered a Parker converter for my fountain pen so that I could use my ink and it's arrived and it's broken in two. So well done Ryman. Thanks for that. But also, luckily, luckily I bought a backup fountain pen. <laughs> I already do have two fountain pens, but I just love them. What has happened? This case is cracked as well. This package went through some trauma. But I got a nice diplomat pen. Oh, look at that. I love the colour. I've not tried a diplomat before. <laughs> oh, it's nice. Oh, it looks nice. So that's my nice click. That is one successful purchase from Ryman and one other non-successful purchase. So I should be getting on at them and saying, Oi, send me a replacement, you beasts. <laughs> Here's me talking about fountain pens, which I'm geeking out about. And later on, oh, there's a cat on the shed roof. Oh my God, quick. This cat is so naughty. He's new. And he keeps coming into my garden to use the um, to use my flower bed as a toilet. I'm going to turn the camera around and show you. Well, he disappeared, which means it's only a matter of minutes before he's about to shit in my my flower beds. So I'm keeping a lookout for that. Uh, yeah, so that's me geeking about fountain pens. And in a few hours, I have to go to the festival and be supportive girlfriend in the front row singing all the songs. Do I know all the words to dance songs? I don't. Um, <laughs> here's a funny story. Before we were together, I've known Dan for a long time. Before we were together, I used to um, come and support the band, do go to all the gigs because I was a good friend, but I only bought their first album, which you know, I kind of told him when we got together, uh, uh, I only bought your first album. He was outraged. Anyway, I put it right because I bought the second album from iTunes when I was, you know, when we were together. But anyway, he never really let me live that down. It's always a point of contention between us. I can't believe he didn't buy my second album. Well, I preferred the first, mate. Sorry. Anyway, so today I have to go and be supportive girlfriend. The thing I struggle with is because I'm a geek and I'm not very down with fashion. Um, I never know, <laughs> I never know what to wear to these things. I feel like oh, I have to represent and be the cool. I'm with the band. <laughs> I'm not. So I'm wearing my Johnny Cash T-shirt today because it's got a guitar in it. But that's about as cool as I get. And I do some do some smoky eyes makeup put a lot of eyeliner on, uh, that's all I could do, and stand at the front and sing <laughs> and mumble along to Dan's mumbling because he is a mumbler. You can't understand a word he's saying when he's singing, you know, so it doesn't matter because no one else knows the lyrics either. He doesn't even know the lyrics, he has to print them out or read them off his phone, which is worse. So, I'm so disappointed about that fountain pen converter. Oh. <laughs> oh dear, these problems I'm having. Honestly, I'm going to have some lunch because I'm hungry. I'll look out for that cat who's about to poo in my garden. Do the washing up and then we shall talk about books. Yay! All right, it's about five hours later. I feel like I've just spent all of my time doing washing up, which I pretty much have. It's like quarter past three now. Holly is going to be here at four o'clock to pick me up. That means I have 45 minutes to chill out before going to the festival and it's raining which is fine I have my raincoat that's fine but after doing park run this morning and then cleaning the little kitchen and now I just want to sit down <laughs> I've got to go back out again I'm not used to going out anymore so I'm gonna sit here and talk to you about the books that I am currently reading because we've had no bookish content so far on this vlog <sighs> and relax. So, one book I'm still reading 
I can't remember what I picked this up for. It was a readathon. I'm reading the journal of Catherine Mansfield. This is a Persephone book. Let's look at the end papers because they're always beautiful. Nice. Um, I'm halfway through. This is just nice to pick up here and there. I'm very much enjoying it. But I have at the moment got that overwhelm where I'm reading too many books all at the same time. My bedside cupboard is stacked with books I'm currently reading. So I'm trying to get through some. <laughs> but I do like picking up things like this every now and then, like as and when, just reading little snippets. I read a corker of a snippet. Let me read it to you because it's really nice. The thing I like about reading writer's diaries is when they talk about writing. This is Catherine Mansfield talking about writing. This is in 1919. Shall I be able to express one day my love of work? my desire to be a better writer, my longing to take greater pains, and the passion I feel. It takes the place of religion. It is my religion, of people. I create my people. Of life, it is life. Oh, I love that so much. And it's those kind of snippet, snippets that I am here for. So I am very much enjoying this. Sometimes it kind of goes off on a bit of a weird tangent. I think as well as recording her what she's doing and stuff she tries out and practices her craft in her diary so some parts are like fiction pieces of fiction that i think she's working on because i'm like what is what is this who are these people and i think it's just like her using her diary as a way to practice so that's come both confusing and awesome to read the book that i am mostly uh, reading at the moment is second place by rachel cusk i picked this up from the library and I picked it up before it hit the booker long list now the reserves are through the roof so I need to finish this and get it back by the end of August I will do I am again halfway through on this this is a very slow reflective philosophical kind of read I don't know how I feel about it yet it is about a woman who is invited who is incredibly privileged and I get the impression, though she said she's not massively wealthy, that there's there's money there. So she's very privileged. She lives in this very remote place in a marshland, which to me, it sounds like it's the Fens. So we're near where I live in East Anglia. And she's invited this artist to come and stay in the second place, which is the additional uh, house that she has on the land that I live on. So she uses that as a retreat for writers and artists to come and do their thing and chill out where she lives. And she's basically like hosting them. So this artist dude, just known as Elle, has turned up and she's quite fascinated with his work and she wants to get to know him. It's like she's a fangirl and she wants to know about him, but he just comes across as a real arrogant arsehole and is not very appreciative of the fact that she's let him stay in this house for however many months he wants to stay there for. <laughs> so it's kind of slow. It's about her reflecting on her life and working through some, it's very like internal monologue stuff. And she wants something from this artist and he's not giving it to her. Like she wants interaction, she wants insight and she's not getting it because mostly he's been trying to avoid her. So it's kind of weird, but also like some of it I'm thinking, oh yeah, that's kind of interesting. But other times I'm thinking, oh, this is just like, oh, white woman problems. <laughs> and I don't know whether I'm here for that. So obviously I'm going to finish reading it, but I'm not quite sure how I feel about it. And the, <laughs> the thing that made me laugh this morning, I saw um, Kieran from KD Books had posted on someone else's YouTube video about this book saying, let's just spam the comments with the word Jeffers because the narrative is written to somebody called Jeffers. So this woman is is either writing or narrating to someone called Jeffers. So every now and then it's like, Jeffers, it was like this, or Jeffers, he didn't do this. And <laughs> who is Jeffers? I don't know, I haven't found out yet. Maybe I won't find out. I'm not sure, it's weird. Anyway, there's that. Also, Making Slow Progress with A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget, Bridget, Kemmer, the 
the surname is cut off, Kemera. I'm enjoying this very much. It is a YA fantasy retelling of Beauty and the Beast. It's easy to read. That's what I need right now. I'm very much here for this and um, I'm not very far in. I have, I'm what, eight, 90 pages in. I have got to the part where our heroine Harper has helped save a small family from these soldiers that were about to kill a baby. That was quite extreme. Wasn't expecting that kind of violence. Um, she escaped from the castle where she is being held prisoner by the beast character, which is Wren. And um, she she went off on, she stole his horse, went off on his, on his horse and went into this village where these villagers are being terrorized by these soldiers from God knows where. So it's exciting. I'm here for it. I'm very much enjoying it. Also, I got this from the library, as you can tell by the shiny cover. We have third in the series in the library because it's on display. We don't have the second. So do you know what I've done? Put in a purchase request because you can do that, you know, not just library staff. I did that before I was library staff. If the library, if your local library doesn't have a book that you want, if you've searched the catalogue and it's not there, you can ask them to buy it. And more often than not, they will buy it for you. So I have put in a purchase request for the second book in this series because it's the second book in the series and we don't have it. We need it. There you go. Also, I have just started reading, barely started reading, A Decolonial Feminism by Francoise Verge. Or Verge. Again, I still don't know how to say this. I need to look that up. This is a French book and it is translated. I've done this last time by Ashley Bora. I am not even on chapter one. I've read the introduction, but I've started underlining things. So this is going to be an interesting read. It's already an interesting read. I will speak more about this when I've got a bit further in. Oh, still plodding through Invisible Women though as well. I have to finish this for my book club, which is probably like next week or something. I don't know. <laughs> I've got a few hundred pages left, so I need to crack on with this. I'm going to read some more of this tomorrow. I don't think I'm going to get any reading done for the rest of the day now. This reading vlog is going to be a bit of a failure because today has been busy, unexpectedly busy. I just thought I'm going to the festival in the evening so I can chill out during the day and read and work on a short fiction piece that I'm writing. No, that hasn't happened. All I've done is drive people about, go to park run. Do some washing up. And email Ryman's about my broken pen converter. I did that just now. <laughs> Ryman's, hello. I've received my order today and the pen converter was broken. Please send me another one. But I did try out the Diplomat and it's smooth. It's nice and smooth writing. So I am pleased with that purchase. So now I think I'm going to read a bit more of second place or I might read a bit of this because I need to chill out before I have to head out to the festival things I have to remember to take with me Dan's hair putty because you know he's got to look good when he's on stage some chairs apparently everyone's taking chairs to the festival and I think that's it and then when I get there listen to some music have some beers I will film a little bit when I'm there as well so you can soak up the vibe then I'll speak to you later on probably tomorrow, about some more book stuff. Speak to you in a bit. Bye. Hello. We are at Bugfest. That is uh, the lead singer of the beautiful Susie. It's raining a lot. Um, but it's really busy here. And there's lots of people. And currently, as you can hear, there is... But they're doing lots of songs that make me want a jazz hand at the end. Um, so all of my outfit plans have gone to pot because I'm having to wear a rain mat and put my hair up so that I don't look like Carol Decker by the end of the evening. So this is fun!
the gig went really well last night and um, lots of people went back to someone's house for an after party. I did not because I was shattered. I came home and got into bed by nine o'clock, but they all went out and were drinking and stuff. So Dan's very tired. We went out for breakfast this morning, which we don't usually do. Um, I think he's up now, but um, we thought we'd go out and have breakfast to celebrate. And that was nice. I didn't, didn't vlog any of that. And then came back, I've just been sat downstairs reading Second Place by Rachel Cusk. St I'm struggling to get through it a little bit now. First of all, I was like, I was into it, but I'm just feeling a bit like wading through treacle now. So, I don't know, I don't think it's going to pick up because it's quite philosophical and reflective. And also that character, that artist character is a bit of a bell end. So, yeah. <laughs> I'll finish it because I do want to finish it. But I'm feeling reluctant to pick it up. I'm up here at my desk now because I want to finish working on a creative piece that I've been writing. There's a submission that I'm aiming to uh, send it into. I think the deadline is tonight. It said send by Sunday, so I don't know whether that means I'm too late for it and I've missed the submission slot or it means by the end of today because there isn't a time. So I'm going to finish it anyway and send it in. You know, what's the worst that can happen? They can say it's too late. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to finish that and then I'm going to go back to reading. I'm feeling very tired, even though I went to bed early. <laughs> I'm still feeling very tired because all of my muscles ache. I can feel every single one of my muscles from park run yesterday. I forgot. I forgot when I do park run or when I run a f like 5k just <laughs> how <laughs> how much I feel it afterwards and today usually it's like two days after you know they get the day after the day after muscles so god knows what I'm not gonna be able to move tomorrow so I need to do some stretching later on because I am in pain today so I'm gonna drink my tea finish this piece do edit and then send it in wish me luck later I completely failed at rounding off uh, that weekend vlog because I was exhausted on that Sunday so after I spent most of that Sunday afternoon and evening writing that piece that I wanted to, to submit so I did I submitted it but I didn't read anything else and so I thought I would check back in with you just to talk about one book I finished second place by Rachel Cusk I'm not going to speak about it now because I have lots of thoughts, so I'm going to talk about that in my wrap up, in my August wrap up, which I'm going to do very soon. You can probably get the gist of what I'm going to say because it follows the same lines of what I've already been talking about. Anyway, the book I wanted to talk to you about, because I've read a bit more of it, is A Decolonial Feminism by Francois Vergès. That's how you say it because I looked it up. Um, so I read this book, is only two sections. I've read the first section which is about kind of defining decolonial feminism. I'm really finding this fascinating and it resonates with why I'm no longer talking to white people about race. It is basically a manifesto for a feminism which is decolonial, which is anti-racist as part of its core. It interrogates white feminism or like majority feminism, which she calls civilizational feminism. And it kind of exposes it for, for being what it is. It's white centric, it's white supremacist, it is uh, very Eurocentric. So uh, Francois Verge talks about the need to think about feminism in terms of 
what it deconstructs rather than what it assimilates into. So she is criticising this civilizational feminism for positioning feminist gains as assimilating into a patriarchal society that is um, very much based on uh, colonial and capitalist structure. This book is very Marxist in its approach, so it is very anti-capitalist, anti -capitalist, which I'm on board with. So it's not just about looking at what feminists have achieved, it's about deconstructing the whole bloody thing. <laughs> so talking about why are we why are we framing feminist achievements as achievements when they are assimilating into a structure, a society, a way of being that necessarily negates a, a position of of living that is detrimental to a broad range of people. So not just women, um, but but everybody in terms of the way that people are undervalued by a capitalist society. So I, f I find that really a really rich reading of um, a feminism that goes like hand in hand with what um, Rennie Edo Lodge does. And there's some really interesting things that she does in here. So she talks about the way that uh, feminism has been framed in terms of uh, progress through waves. So, you know, we talk about um, first, second, third wave feminism and she kind of disregards that. And she's like, I don't want to talk about um, I don't think we should talk about feminism in terms of waves or stages of achievement because it just because, again, it's all very Eurocentric and white woman feminism. And it disregards the um, progress that has been made by um, BIPOC women um, and it kind of discounts the actions of the women in the global south. So there's so much to think about in here and it's for such a small volume like I've like I said I've only read the first section I have highlighted and tabbed a lot of stuff in here it's very rich and um I would urge you to pick it up it's not particularly academic I mean it is academic but it's not like difficult to read I think I find it quite an accessible text um there are some kind of concepts that she's drawing out here but she explains it all so I think it's very readable. Um, I will link in the description box down below an interview that she did with um, another writer of a feminist text that I have down there in my pile to read, Lola Olafemi, who wrote Feminism Interrupted. And um, they have a conversation hosted by Pluto Press, um, who are the publisher of these books. Um, and it's fantastic. So do go and check that out. Also read this book. Okay, so I just wanted to wrap up by talking about that a little bit more because I'm really enjoying it. It's fantastic. I'm going to finish this terrible vlog here because there's been hardly any reading, a lot of music, which has been fun and <laughs> not very successful at weekend vlogging when other things are happening. <laughs> I will speak to you all in my next video, which will be my August wrap up, where I will talk about second place. Jeffers!